A long time ago in a faraway state, becoming a professional angler took resilience, consistency, and mental toughness. You also needed a strong foundation to learn and adapt to new fishing conditions, patterning fish movements, and knowing all fishing styles. Has our so-called sport turned into a debacle and a rich-only game? Has professional fishing become an elitist sport? Is this the demise of professional bass fishing? That's what we're going to talk about right now. Now, if you like this kind of content, click that like and subscribe button. Make sure you're part of the team and the family. And thank you. Thank you to all the people who comment constantly. I respect all your comments. I appreciate all your comments. I like learning from your comments. But I really appreciate all the comments and views and the new subscribers. But if you're not one of them, click the subscribe and welcome to the team. Why are we seeing another fall in professional bass fishing like we did when the split happened with Major League Fishing and bass? Now, I believe there's three factors that are happening, maybe three or four factors that are happening within the industry or for professional bass fishermen that are causing the demise of fishing, of professional fishing. And I'd really like to see your comments below and tell me what you think of the demise has been. To start off, after COVID, there was a giant spike in anglers fishing. Why? Because you couldn't do anything else. So people went out and fished. At that point in time, we saw an increase in tackle prices and an increase in boat. We saw inflation go up. We've seen gas prices continuously go up. We've seen everything that we need to go fishing increase. And where there was a time when you could get a pack of worms for under four or five bucks, now is seven, eight dollars. And even though it doesn't seem like much, when you add it all up, it slowly says maybe part of the issue that we're having is inflation and the cost of goods that we import into the United States is causing some people not to go fishing. But is inflation and the cost of goods part of the problem? Next, I think what will be a majority of the people are going to say this, and I understand and I appreciate it, but technology might be part of the problem too. Technology might be the demise of fishing. Forward-facing sonar is either you love it or you hate it. As a professional angler, I think you need to know it. As a recreational fun fisherman, me, a fan fisherman, I think it would be great to have, but I think we have a problem with technology. And I think the anglers also have a problem with technology. Some have learned it and taken it to another level. Others have taken a step back and said, I don't want to learn it. I like to fish the way I want to fish. I want to sight fish. I want to beat the banks. But those anglers aren't winning the tournaments. If you're not using forward-facing sonar, you're not winning tournaments. And you might get one or two a year that you can that forward-facing sonar, sonar isn't dominant. But consistently, the anglers who are being the best of the best are forward-facing sonar anglers. And these young anglers and rookies come in, and because of forward-facing sonar, they shrink the lake. They're able to find fish that we've never seen before, see what they react to and how they react to a bait. And they are precise and perfect with the technology. And there's give and takes to the technology because, as an example, I think that if you've been to the same place, bass going to Palatka, example, they go to Palatka almost yearly. Anglers who have been on the circuit in the elites for those many years know Palatka as well as anybody. Whereas a rookie who comes in, who doesn't get a lot, gets three days of practice time, does all of his research online, and then goes to Palatka, probably wouldn't do as well. And forward-facing sonar brings those anglers up to the par that the vets have. And I can see where the vets are mad because these anglers are finding fish and being consistent and they're, be they're winning versus these anglers, these veteran anglers who have put the time in on the water, have learned how to fish the spectrum of fishing. They know that if this happens, this is where I'm going to fish. Forward-facing sonar takes that out. But is forward-facing sonar the demise of fishing? My third one is, is social media the problem and the demise of fishing? So as someone who makes YouTube videos, I can tell you this isn't an easy way to make a living. It isn't an easy way to make any living unless you have unbelievable amount of followers. I can honestly say the few hundred dollars I make each month off these videos doesn't really help my family. And I try to be very honest and open and try to be as unbiased as possible when I do these videos. But is social media the issue? 
Social media allows anglers to go online and see what other anglers are doing, hear what they're doing, watch videos. Is watching videos and hearing all the negative stuff hurting our industry? Is it the demise of bass fishing? Can you be successful on YouTube? Yes. Is it destructive? Yes. Is there too many people trying to clickbait you into negative topics or clickbait you to watch their videos? Yes. And while it really stinks, clickbait and drama is what a majority of the people want to watch on YouTube. I'm just using me as an example. I've put out hundreds of videos about closer looks on lures. And some of them do really well, but the majority of them get very little clicks. And I go out and spend a ton of time fishing the lure, finding out as much as I can, doing underwater slow motion videos, and then making the video versus something like this, which will probably get two or three times more clicks or more views than something that is productive to help you. And these days when you have a YouTube channel, you have memberships and you have affiliations. You have all the stuff that help you become, or the YouTube content creator, become more successful. But there's some people that just blast it down your throat at all times. I have a problem when I go watch a YouTube video and all I hear is the same product over and over and over. Because at that point in time, I realize that they're sponsored by that product. And for me as a fan, I don't know if I can trust it because I think that when you're sponsored by somebody, you end up being very nice and you won't say the negative things about what's happening. I have a Tackle Warehouse affiliate and I have memberships. It's one of the things I don't promote. I feel like if you know me and you want to do the memberships and you want to get the videos ahead of time and you want to use my affiliation link, then you'll do it. Not that I need to tell you. I don't want to tell you. But there's content creators that are constantly pushing that stuff down your throat, hoping that you'll buy their product off that website. And that might be another problem that's happening in the industry. But is social media the demise of professional bass fishing? My last one is, was the split with Major League Fishing and Bass the demise of professional fishing? Now this one's about as controversial as it can be. There are still people that are very upset over the move from Bass to Major League Fishing. But those anglers had a better opportunity to make more money for their family, supposedly. And while there's so many people that don't like Major League Fishing and think that Bass is it, there's a loyalty for bass but was that split the start of the demise of professional fishing because you can ask anglers in major league fishing and in bass there was people that were saying you need to come see us or else you're gonna everything is gonna be ruined for you and some anglers stuck it out with bass because they saw a bigger platform where major league fishing constantly said you're gonna make more money over here and now with major league fishing in 2025 having the biggest purse a lot less people in the field, which isn't happy for some people, it's going to be, it's again going to be weighing apples and oranges. Which one is better than which? You can see both sides of the story on this one because you can say Bass is doing, has a bigger platform. Major League Fishing has the names. Bass is growing their group of anglers. You can't beat Patrick Walters or the Johnston brothers. Those guys are absolutely fantastic. At the same time, Major League Fishing has their invitationals and they're bringing five people up every year that are fantastic anglers. Look at Matt Becker and Drew Gill. Look at Jacob Wheeler and Dustin Connell and Adrian Avina and all those guys. Major League Fishing has, a, has the more recognizable names where Bass is trying to, still trying to build those names that they had. But was the split that happened six years ago the start of the demise of professional bass fishing. So here's where you come in. What do you think? What are those four topics? Which one was the worst? Which one is the one that separates us from being a sport instead of a hobby? Now here's some of the issue. I know majority of the people are gonna say forward-facing sonar, I understand that. I know that there's anglers that believe forward-facing sonar is, has been hurting the industry, and I understand it. But tell me what you think. Is it a combination of all the things? Because as someone who's a content creator, I try to do my best to keep an even keel, but it's hard at times. I'll be honest, I hear from anglers and friends that I've dealt with for 15, 20 years, and they say, this is what I think, Steve, blah, blah, blah. And I take those, those things into, into my knowledge of what's going on. But I wanna know what you think. So comment below and tell me what you think 
the demise is and can we get out of it? Can the industry survive what's going on right now? Because we've thought for years that the Bass elites was all hunky-dory, but now we're hearing and seeing that maybe it isn't as hunky-dory as we thought. Maybe both organizations have problems. Can the anglers or should the anglers come together and form one unique organization and fish together? I don't think that can happen. I do think that what Major League Fishing is doing with making the BPT as elite as possible with only the best of the best is the way it should happen. But I see the other side of bass bringing five fish over the stage and fishing and having that fan support. One has a ton of support, the other one doesn't. So again, comment below and tell me what you think. I'm going to end this because it's going to start raining and I can hear it right now. So take a kid fishing, get your fish on. Thanks for watching. Thanks for everything. I really do appreciate y'all. Cheers.